our third speaker. Um, Studio Output is one of London's leading design agencies and recently took on the rebrand of cult music streaming platform Mixcloud. We're delighted to say that we're joined this evening uh, by creative director and partner, Johanna Drew, um, who's going to talk us through the details of this project, which used the I in Mixcloud's name to illustrate the power of music. Um, Johanna, please turn on your audio and video as well so we can say hello. <laughs> hello. Hi there. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thanks. Are you? Yeah, fine. Thank you. All, all good. Um, I guess just, just before we, we see your talk, I, I noticed that you guys at Studio Output have done quite a lot of work with music brands or brands involved in the kind of audio space. It must be fun to do that kind of thing, to kind of bring an audio business to, to life. It, it oh, definitely. Um, I think, to be honest, it's, it's interesting as soon as there's any different type of project in the studio, but yeah, something that kind of moves and has sound and kind of imbued through it. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a super interesting kind of project to work through. Fantastic. Well, we're going to hear a lot more about it now. Um, so I'm going to hand over to you and um, I'll kind of yeah, step away and, and see you back here in, in 10 minutes or so. Um, anyone in the audience, if you, if you do have questions for Johanna, please put them in the Q&A and I'll, I'll get to them afterwards. Super. So I've got my glasses, so I don't have to scowl at the, the machine. Um, but so, yeah, hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Johanna. I'm the creative director at, at Output. Um, so we're a, uh, quite a small boutique style studio. Um, at the minute, the whole team is very much working from home, as I'm sure a lot of other studios are. Um, but we were previously based um, in Farringdon. And as a studio, we work with a range of different clients um, to help create brand and digital experiences. And as Matt just mentioned, we work with, um, we've worked with Playlister recently to create a digital first brand um, for them. Um, we also create global design systems for more established brands like Auto Trader, who have got a lot of heritage and really need to kind of keep up being kind of more digital first and have a consistent look and feel across all of their different products and services. Um, or clients that are maybe new to the market or extending into new territories, um, like our work for um, Monzo Business, who are moving into the kind of more um, business account side of um, things. Or equally creating maybe just simple, beautiful experiences um, that are super engaging, like our site response for the mill. Um, that's a very quick kind of tour of, of kind of the highlights of um, studio output. Um, but I'm obviously here, as Matt said, to kind of talk through some of our work for Mixcloud. Um, the kind of the project itself had come out um, a couple of months before the, this talk was first, first built. So maybe felt a little bit more relevant to show you some of this behind the scenes. Um, but I've pulled together a deck that hopefully Kind of takes you on a, a whistle stop tour through some of our processes and some of the early work through the through the project that hopefully you guys think is interesting um, so mixcloud just for anyone who doesn't know um, is an online streaming service for for dj mixes for radio shows and for podcasts um, and we were asked to help them create a brand identity that would capture the spirit of mixcloud um, and then run through every part of their brand from the site to social to merchandise and then through to the kind of the product experience itself. And we had some interesting challenges as we were moving through that exercise. Um, essentially, Mixcloud was very much kind of confused at the time with Soundcloud. Um, as you can see, they've got relatively similar parts within the, the logo. Um, they used very similar design patterns across their, their brand, but also through the product um, itself. Um, we also had um, a look at the kind of the wider landscape. And again, there were a lot of similarities between how people communicated um, their product in more out of product um, experiences like advertising or how they used consistent um, treatments across imagery. Um, and then through to kind of um, design patterns that were just used over and over again. Um, so there was no real kind of standout in the market. And Mixcard really wanted to demonstrate a step change that would give them distinction in this crowded marketplace, um, serve the audio creators that have been kind of working with them and uploading content onto their site for the past kind of 10 years, but then really start to attract um, the kind of the creators of tomorrow. And to do that, they really wanted to put humanity at the core of the brand and at the core of the experience. So it's less about algorithms um, and more about people and the focus on, on, on them. 
And the starting point for all of our projects is character and linking that with a, a kind of a core concept. Uh, character for us is a really um, great way in which we can express brand values in an actionable form. Um, so it informs how a brand will look, will feel and behave. And that character combined with the core concept for Mixcloud about emotionally connecting with Saud um, would then drive the user experience, um, hopefully harmonize that design language and then energize the kind of the motion, uh, the interfaces through motion and sound. And the first few sprints that we do are essentially a little bit like experiment and play, um, but within the guardrails uh, of character. Um, so we can go super broad and establish kind of territories that we think might be interesting or might resonate with the character traits, with the core concepts and with the client. Um, and we're just not constrained to any specific outputs. Um, we can look at typography, we look at color, layout, maybe some graphic devices, um, iconography and imagery. Um, and we start to, as you can kind of see, we start to kind of test out some little experiments within the icon itself um, for the Mixcloud app. But it's not just a visual um, kind of treatment that we want to give, um, give Mixcloud. We also do that same exercise across the app and the site experience to use character to inform um, and drive that user experience forwards. Um, so we start to ask ourselves about how we can kind of start to create emotional connections through moments through the, the app or the site. What does maybe Brave look like? Um, what features does it start to inform? And from that, the, the, um, the client really hooked onto this idea of a, a visible connection that would imbue um, and link together different communities and cultures, different genres, um, as you see here, day and night, but the kind of the creator and the listener. And we knew this would do an amazing job for us, um, linking the kind of the logo, the icon and the typography together, um, however playfully. Um, and we knew it could also live across imagery as well, kind of reflecting the rhythm, reflecting moods. Um, but the, the kind of the chief um, question was about what form that might start to take. Um, and we did again some kind of broad exercises to see how that might start to, to live. Um, was it something that was maybe a little bit more adaptive and growing and stretching? Um, was it something that was maybe a little bit more fluid um, or something that felt a bit more kind of rhythmic in the way the letter forms were created? And we settled on the more geometric with this kind of playful adaption of the letter forms, um, depending on maybe the music that was starting to be um, communicated. We then worked with Pangram Pangram, who had a typeface that we were really interested in using um, to start to translate that concept into reality. Um, so adapting the characters within that font to have more fluid forms, um, but also to extend out across a whole world of ligatures. Um, we had to do some quite interesting um, experiments to try and get those ligatures working and to test that we had um, enough of them. Um, what, was the, what was the least amount that we needed? What was the most? Um, what were the combinations? Um, what was the ideal scenario? <laughs> um, and we were given a whole bunch of genres that I had no idea what they were um, <laughs> from a very uncool creative director point of view, but just to see how they might start to, to live. Um, and from there, we could then spec and commission Pangram Pangram to, to create the typeface. And that typeface then became Sign Sans, um, the Mixcloud own today. They use across all of their different applications and touch points and has this idea of kind of fluidity and connection through the letter forms expanding and contracting um, that then links really smoothly with um, this idea of a, um, a visible connector as well um, that can link together genres um, or different types of music or sound together um, or different experiences and then contract down to the, the logo or the kind of the icon itself. And those kind of combination of elements um, meant that Mixcloud could own any, any application that they were creating. Um, they use a lot of um, UGC content. Um, so having the kind of typography and the connector that could live over the top of those images meant that they could really raise the quality of the, the posts and really um, wrap the brand um, across those, those kind of sounds. It also meant they could own genres um, and as many and as wild of them as they have. 
both across advertising or outside of the product, but also inside the product. Um, and they could also use that connection and that typeface across social for a very consistent um, kind of link through different um, communities. Um, it obviously worked really well across um, merchandise as well, but we were super conscious that we didn't want this connector to be just a decorative element. Um, we wanted it to be an intrinsic part of the, the digital product as well. Um, so we've basically worked with the Mixcloud product team to develop um, our initial moments um, that we explored through the character and then add um, a brand look and feel to them. Um, and this then um, started to bring to life the fact that we could visualize these genres in the product itself. We could create visible connections um, between experiences, between genres, between different sounds, um, some expected and some more unusual so that people were kind of constantly discovering and constantly surprised. Um, we could present artists through different interconnected types of experiences rather than algorithms, um, but through recommendations or affiliations with other artists. And the connector itself became this very kind of living functional moment in the product that we could interact with, that we could scrub through um, and visualize the sound that the user is listening to and essentially informed the full look and feel of the, the kind of the digital product. And that way of working allows us to really excite the client with the reality of how the brand lives in the short term. Um, but it also really engages with the team with the fact that, that what the experience can be if character and the core construct and the brand can all really truly live together across those product experiences. Um, obviously, as we go through the process, we're working very collaboratively with Mixcloud um, and passing files backwards and forwards. But in the end, this is theirs for, to do with what they, what they want. And it's been really great to see how that work has been built on and developed by the the full team at Mixcloud in fulfilling this vision of supercharging this kind of emotional connection between audio creators, no matter what the size, whether it's kind of a, a bedroom creator or someone out playing to like hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people um, and their biggest fans. Um, and that's, that's essentially it's a little whistle, whistle stop tour. Um, but I, I hope that makes sense. And thank you for listening. Thanks very much, Johanna. That was that was amazing to go through all of that in in ten minutes. Very rapid. Just to stop talk. Um, was, is, first first question is is electro is that genuinely a uh, a genre of music or is that a test? <laughs> no, all, all of those are. Yeah, we I think we were given about um, ten to fifteen something like that of these genres, and obviously I had not heard of any of them. And all the <laughs> all the guys that were clambering when the project first started to come through the studio to work on it knew exactly what they were. So. Okay, yeah, right. they filled in the gaps. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, I guess the first question is really just about the, the typography. You said you worked with Pangram Pangram and um, I guess it, the whole the whole identity is quite led by the type. I mean, how important was it and what was the process, I guess, of finding the right typeface for this? So the, we, we knew from the kind of the early meetings um, that we couldn't rely on imagery or anything kind of super clever outside of a, a digital framework. We needed the type and we needed color to do a lot of different jobs for us. Um, so we were kind of on the lookout already for a typeface that would work from kind of a, a kind of an advertising campaign or something out of product, but also would work really well for any kind of headlines. Um, when we kind of settled on um, the initial typeface, which is New Machina, we, we really liked how it was super fluid um, and felt like it could quite easily adapt. Um, and then, as I say, it was just a question then of each time kind of creating um, ligatures and kind of saying we think these are the amounts that we need. And um, we had to spec so many different combinations that could be used um, so that they can all be live. There's nothing kind of image related for anyone that's creating anything um, at the, in the Mixcloud team. OK, right. Um, and I guess I'm always fascinated to hear this. Like, I know this was quite a long time ago, as you mentioned, um, you know, it was a lot more kind of uh, brand new six months ago. But I guess just how long and how intensely are you working on a project like this? I mean, I'm curious to curious to know. So, yeah, so um, it was quite an intensive three month project, to be honest. Um, we joined after they'd created a um, quite a heavy strategy piece. So the, the, that kind of heavy lifting had already been done. We kind of picked it up from that to then translate into character and, and kind of the initial design sprints that I showed you. Um, the project overall did last six months because we needed to make sure we'd kind of tested um, and validated with users and make sure all of the stakeholders were 100% on board. Um, so that kind of stretched it out a little bit, but yeah, the, 
it would have been a three months in a more ideal um, situation. Right. Okay. Great. Well, listen, uh, Johanna, thanks so much for that. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, really appreciate you joining us uh, this evening. And, um, no worries. Thank you for having me. No, at all. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it's time now for us to meet our fourth and final speaker of the evening, uh, 